Welcome back to Carolina this week. Joining me now is State Senator Vincent Shaheen. Two times in a row now running for governor of South Carolina from Camden. Thanks for being with us. Thanks, Tim. It's good to be back. Again, I think I probably asked you the same question uh, four years ago, but why, why are you running? Well, we know that South Carolina's state government is profoundly broken. It's been corrupted through many of our officials, uh, including our governor's own ethical problems. And we've seen an economy that's really stagnated. So South Carolina has seen declining incomes for four years straight. Our public schools too often fail, and our roads are crumbling. I know one thing, unless we change things, nothing will be better. So I'm running for governor to make a real difference in South Carolina. I think we need somebody like that again in the governor's mansion. Governor Haley will tout that she brought a lot of jobs to South Carolina, a lot of businesses located here or relocated here under her watch. She says things are booming in the state. Why do you why do you think we need to change the course at this point? Well, facts are stubborn things. If there's one thing we know, it's the things that Governor Haley says you often can't trust. We were recently rated as the fifth worst economy in America. And the, dat the numbers don't lie. We have seen declining incomes for South Carolina's families for the last few years under Governor Haley. I especially hear when I come to this region, to Horry County and the PD, um, that people feel like the governor has not been here, has not paid attention, has not helped this area. I hear that in other areas of the state as well, but numbers don't lie. We've seen unemployment rate decline across America, and I'm thankful that that's true in South Carolina as well. But if we look at whether we're growing wealth, we're not. We've seen declines in incomes, and we've seen a record number of people drop out of the workforce. That's troubling. We have to change it. I'm focused on how we can support small businesses throughout South Carolina so we can create those jobs and build those incomes. Well, let's talk about that, how, because that is probably the, the biggest issue of this, of this uh, candidacy or of this um, election season are jobs and making people more prosperous around here. Um, Governor Haley, as you mentioned, will say that the rates are lower. Um, but this is still a tough economy nationwide. How do you buck the how do you buck the trend? How do you how do you how do you turn it around? Well, we've seen states that are successful really invest in and support small locally owned business. That might be a, a business with five jobs or 200 jobs. Uh, so I want to create a division of entrepreneurship and small business in our Department of Commerce. You know, it's great to lure a branch facility of a big corporation, but unless we support the entities that exist here already and help them thrive. We're never going to grow our economy in South Carolina. We also have really high property tax rates on commercial property in South Carolina. Um, that's a drag here on the coast on many deals that could occur, many real estate um, developments that could help uh, spur that economy. I want to reduce those property taxes. Governor Haley voted and has supported increasing those property taxes on, on commercial property over the years. I think it's critical if we're going to have a good business climate that we lower those, that we invest in small business and entrepreneurship. And finally, you know, we've got to have an infrastructure that works for South Carolina. Um, our roads are a mess. They're falling apart. Congestion is awful. Governor Haley has done nothing in four years to try to improve that. And I released a detailed plan to fix our roads and invest in our bridges. Uh, over the next four years, we need a governor who's going to do something. And that's what I plan just to do. We'll get back to infrastructure in a minute, but let's continue with jobs. And you brought up tourism and small businesses. Of course, that's king around here. I've talked to a lot of small business owners, and a lot of them tell me you wouldn't think there would be, but there's way too much regulation in South Carolina on small businesses. Let the state get out of the way, and we can do our job. Even above the federal government, they cite South Carolina regulations specifically. What about regulation? Democrats typically don't cut regulation, but might impose more. Well, I think the proof's in the pudding. We've had Governor Haley for four years, and those regulations are still there. If she wanted to get rid of them, she would. That's exactly the reason I want to create a division of entrepreneurship and small business in our Department of Commerce, so that, that they can help tell the governor and businesses what regulations we can get rid of that aren't working, and also help those businesses navigate the regulations and the often two times bureaucratic red tape that South Carolina's government imposes. The one thing I know is we've had Governor Haley for four years, and she's not done much of anything to help small business in South Carolina. Uh, I am a small businessman. I come from a family of small business people. Uh, and I know that if we're going to succeed in tourism uh, or in farming or in other small businesses across this state, retail, uh, residential um, developments, then we have, to, we have to support them. It's not happening now. Let's talk about infrastructure. A lot of times I talk about I-73 with local candidates. but. 
Let's save that for the federal this sure. time, because people around here want something fixed quicker than right. I-73 is going to get built. Uh, Highway 501, there's some plans for overpasses and for widening it years and years and years down the road. A lot of people, particularly in the Carolina forest area, which is booming in Horry County, say 501 needs to be widened sooner, not later. What can we do to speed things up? What can we do to speed things up? I think there's almost a sense around here that Charleston gets what they want as far as roads go, but Horry County gets left behind, and we're really helping drive the economic engine that is tourism in South Carolina. There's no question. One of the reasons I come to Horry County so frequently is I see it as part of the economic engine of South Carolina. And again, I hear over and over again from people when I'm out there that they're frustrated that Governor Haley hasn't done anything to help uh, ease the congestion or to improve the economy in Conway or Horry County uh, at large. I want to make sure that we do something. And that's why I released a plan to fix roads just like that um, several months ago. Governor Haley said she's going to release a plan in January. Um, well, secret plans don't work. We need to talk about these issues now. What can we do? Number one, we need to com converge our state infrastructure bank, which helps to fund roads, and our Department of Transportation. There's no need to have two agencies with partly the same mission. Um, so that would be number one. That way we can make a better use of our resources. Number two, we need to fix those existing roads. Those people are exactly right. We've got a problem now with an existing road. We need to make sure our dollars go to fix that road before we work on other projects. Doesn't mean that there aren't worthy ones, but we need to make sure that we do that. Number three, we need to, in we need to dedicate sources of revenue to the roads. I've talked about the need, if we expand I-95, which I believe we should, to toll part of that, just like they do in other states. Generate revenue, which we then frees up revenue to use on existing roads right here in Horry County. We need to look at all the fees, including interstate truck fees, to make sure we're competitive and commit those, those dollars to projects like this. And then finally, every year we see growth in the state budget. Those leftover dollars that we have every year, we should put in a fund that we dedicate to road construction in South Carolina. That will equal hundreds of millions of dollars over time. I'm tired of people like Governor Haley saying there's a problem and not giving us a solution. That's why I'm putting plans out there. What about expanding Medicaid and Medicare? Is that something that if Vincent Shaheen was governor, you would be looking into doing? Right now, Governor Haley is blocking 11 billion, with a B, of our own Medicaid tax dollars. That's tax dollars that people in, Co in Corey County are being taxed that are going to New Jersey, they're going to Pennsylvania, they're going to other states. I would bring our Medicaid tax dollars to South Carolina to help those elderly citizens that might live here, um, to help those children and families who might live here. Um, lots of people pay a lot in federal taxes, and I think it is just partisanship uh, and politics at worst for Governor Haley to block our own tax dollars from coming to South Carolina. You know, if we keep our tax dollars here, it frees up more tax dollars to fix things like roads and bridges. If we're going to pay them, don't we want them here? What about the people who would say, yeah, but if you take those, we're just going to end up owing a lot more down the road. It's a good idea not to take it. You know, that's why I believe if an idea is good, uh, whether it's a Democratic or Republican, I really don't care, then we should do it. And if it's bad, I don't care who proposes it either. Right now, we can accept 100% of our dollars here to, to help Medicaid, uh, help hospitals, help pay doctors and nurses. Uh, and it doesn't cost the state anything. Why wouldn't we do that? If down the road costs are attached that the state can't afford, then I am very able to say no. Uh, I think that's our job as leaders, to say yes when something helps and say no when it's a problem. Um, so why can't we lead instead of hiding and ducking? Last question for you. Everybody always knows my last question to a candidate, but why should I vote for you? Well, I want you to vote for me because we need a leader who is honest and accountable. Look, we've seen over and over again, whether it's with the hacking scandal that Governor Haley still won't release the report on that affected every one of us, or the DSS, Department of Social Services, scandals that we've seen over the last year where she covered up what was actually happening at an agency and children were harmed, or whether it's her abusing our tax dollars by using our state car to go have campaign functions in North Carolina. Um, that we need now more than ever a governor who's accountable, open, and is trustworthy. Um, only when we have that can we begin to solve these bigger problems like our economy, like our roads, like our public schools. Um, I want to have a governor that we can trust again, and I want to have a government that we can have faith in. All right. State Senator Vincent Shaheen, Democratic candidate for governor here in South Carolina. Thanks for being with us. Thanks, Tim. It's great to be with you. Stay with us. We'll be right back.